Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Hello and welcome to the 10th year of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. I'm Lauren Bolander, this is Captain Rick Murphy, and Rick, the studio looks incredible. It's great to be back, Lauren, and besides that, we have a new look and we also have a new season coming up. But before we go, we got to get some bad news to tell everybody. Yeah, that's right, Rick. Unfortunately, this is going to be my last night here with the crew. I'm going to move on to pursue my other passion, which everyone will knows is in motorsports. But I am going to leave you in very capable hands, no one worry. Allow me to introduce to everyone Bree Gabrielle, your brand new co-host of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome, Bree. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. What is this? Well, don't panic. This is none other than the very special pink baton I'm going to be passing to you right now. But as you can see, Bree, of course, that is actually just a fishing rod so you, of your very own so you can kick Ritz butt out on the water. Don't worry, I will. I'll make you proud. You're going to do amazing. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lauren. And I know Rick and I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. And you did an amazing job. I have some big shoes to fill. No, no, no. You're going to do great. Let's and go I'm going to miss it, guys. I'll be back often. Aww. You can't get rid of me that easy. All right, Lauren. Well, thank you. The crew here, we wanted to give you something Aww. to take with you, some pretty flowers. And more importantly, Beautiful. we want to wish you and Tony the best yeah. season. We hope that you guys repeat in the Indi Indianapolis 500 and uh, thank you so much for your hard work no, last year. Thank you guys yep. very much. Thanks Lauren. Okay well we don't want to keep the guy at the bench waiting so please let's give a warm welcome to Dave Farrell. How you guys doing? Good how are you? Got a new house, a new girl. I feel like I've been in a divorce or something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what happened? Well I've got a new rod. How about that? That's awesome. That's okay. awesome. Let's, let's get the year kicked off. Let's get it started Rick. What do you say? I think it, I think I'm ready. I'm hey, ready. So, so let's talk about Kobe as you know what, let me tell you, Bree, the one thing that I love about Kobe is, is in the Sports Fishing Magazine photos here, you can tell that they really get big in size. They got the white stripe down their side, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. We take a look at the second picture. They've got a really impressive mouth. They've got some lips there that are very rough and edges. They're a graspy type of feeders where they grab onto their, their uh, prey, as well as, it's a, it, you can grab it, it's not like all saltwater fish, you can grab it a lot like a bass. You can grab them by the lower lip. But more importantly, great table fare, and any time you catch one, they make great sushi, mm -hmm. and you can see it makes all the anglers a lot of happiness. So. Love sushi. Well, let's get things started tonight. We're gonna start with Captain Pat Deneen in the Panhandle region, where the sun has been shining and the cobia are biting. Hey Pat, how are the cobia conditions up there? Hey, welcome aboard. Uh, I tell you what, the cobia conditions are definitely improving. Uh, our, the fish show up here they, as they migrate through. They migrate along the beaches east to west, usually showing up in mid to late March, running all through April, and then sometimes they migrate all the way into early May. Uh, this year the first fish was caught March 21st by Dennis Bennett on the Old Yellow out of Destin. I think it was like a 46-pound fish. It's strictly a sight fishery um, from the, both the piers and the boats. The best conditions are what we're having right now. Good, good sunshine, southeast, the east winds, and We've had it all week and the conditions are definitely improving. Uh, the bait of choice, number one, is a live eel. Finfish or other small finfish are, are, are a good follow-up. Crabs are also a good bait for them. And if you find a fish that turns its nose up to everything, a, a big live mullet is really hard to beat. Basically, it pays to have a good um, menu selection in your live well. Uh, the jig of choice is a brightly, for me, is a brightly colored Frank Hilton, either a half head or full head diggling jig. Um, they're real chartreuse, real fluorescent bright colors in the water. Our fish run up to about 100 pounds, 30 to 50 pound fish are very common. And so a heavy spinning outfit is, is used with, with a 50 to 60 pound leaders in, in, on both your jigs and your baits. All right, Pat, before we go offshore, I want to take a look at the Navionics like we do every week and we're going to do for the next 26 weeks. Now we're talking about the Panhandle region right there just inside of the Destin uh, Pass. And what the cobias do here is they come migrating to the, to the north or from the south and then when they hit the beach then they have a tendency to graduate or swim to the west. Now when we take a look at the sonar charts the one thing that comes to mind is how we have this pinch point here. So the thing that comes to mind or what I think happens here is on the incoming tide is going to be the prime time because it's going to push these fish along the bar, whether they come from deeper offshore or whether they're back up the beach. Now, the tide starts going out, 
You're going to want to come back and fish up to the east. Get away from that outgoing flow. Brings dirty water out of the uh, pass. And so that's a couple of tips that Pat gave me when we were talking about Navionics. So let's go ahead and talk about what else is happening offshore in your region, Pat. Hey, Rick. Yeah, the amberjack bite's been real consistent on the deeper metal wrecks and the high relief breaks of the southeast and, and southwest break. Uh, generally speaking, the deeper the wreck and the higher the relief, the, be the better the jack fishing. Look for them on your bottom machine, midwater, and then, and then also all the way below, maybe to almost, almost all the way to the bottom, and catch them with flutter jigs or those deep water butterfly jigs, those Williamson jigs, or live baits. If you're going to jig fish them, drop it all the way down to the bottom, and then actively jig it up through the water column. And if you're going to live bait them, use a, a slip sinker rig. I like 12 to 15 foot a leader and a circle hook. Baits of choice are hard, hard tails or bluefish, or even a mingo snapper or a white snapper. Uh, there's plenty of short fish around, around right now, but we have been catching them up to 40 plus pounds. So that fishing's been pretty consistent. Uh, moving inshore, the really good consistent fishing is the sheep's head on the structure inside the Panhandle Passes. The St. Andrews Pass, the Destin Pass, the Destin Bridge are all very good right now. Target them with a live bait, a fiddler crab or a shrimp. Uh, use a Carolina rig with a 20 pound leader and a short, short leader and a small circle hook. Oysters also make a great bait. They're kind of hard to keep on the hook, but if you can, if you can hook them, they're going to eat them. Scrape the barnacles off the, off the pilings to kind of get a chum slick going, and the fish are running up to about five pounds, and they're really good to eat, and it's been a great bite right now. So that is one good thing to go after inshore. The redfish are another right now. There's been some good bull redfish in both the bay and along the beaches when the weather permits. In the bay, look for them underneath the flocks of birds, the cormorants and the pelicans. Either catch them on a troll, uh, deep dive and plug, or even pull up next to those bird concentration and, and deep jig them with a, with a soft plastic or a bucktail jig. Um, along the beach, just look for them right up on that first sandbar. They're in schools and also small groups. You can sometimes get them with a skitter walk or a top dog, but I think my beta choice is a, a lightly colored pearl soft plastic with a light jig head slowly bounced along the bottom. The fish are running all pretty much over 30 inches up to 40 inches. And there's a photo there of John Giddens from Mississippi. He fished with me last week, and uh, that was a nice full redfish that he caught right up on the beach tight using a soft plastic. All right, great report, Pat. A lot of good information. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. Captain Pat says, inshore sheep's heads on the bay structure near the passes, on live fiddler crabs or shrimp, and then offshore, amberjacks on the deep wrecks. Try those flutter jigs or live pinfish. Now we're going to also have an event up in the Panhandle region, Bree, and we're going to be at Blue Water Outriggers, the third or the fourth and the fifth uh, in Port St. Joe this particular week. Sounds like fun. All right. All right. Well, let's head on over to the East region and talk to Captain Mike Holliday about the cobia bites in his neck of the woods. Hey, Mike, how's it looking on our home front? You know what, Bree? It's looking pretty good. We're on the end of our winter cobia run. But off Palm Beach County, where you have that super clean water on the beach, you can find them on the big stingrays in 15 to 25 feet of water or along the drop off in Jupiter in 80 to 110 feet. And then in Martin and St. Lucie counties, we find the Kobe on the wrecks like the Halsey and the Amazon, on the sand pile, the shark barge, and also along the color changes with the manta rays that are up on top feeding on the plankton. Now, Kobe like chartreuse. So a chartreuse fast assassin die dapper a one ounce hookup jig or a Yozuri mag minnow. Those are all deadly cobia lures. The thing to pay attention uh, in that super clear water is that the cobia will sometimes try and nose the bait to feel if it's real. If they do that, pull it away uh, when they get close to it and then pause it and let the fish get close to it again, then pull it away again. That usually fires the fish up. They'll light up and charge a lure and just lunch it. And the other good cobia baits right now, live pilchers, shrimp, grunt, crabs, even mullet. Our average fish are going to be 15 to 30 pounds, about a 40 pounders in the mix. The other thing, it's April. That's always one of the best months for targeting kingfish off Palm Beach County. And this year has kind of been the exception because the big fish have never really left for the winter. The fish have been here all year long. Fishing's getting more consistent every day. You know, just start in 80 to 130 feet of water from the Juno Pier all the way up to the church steeples. Um, there will also be a crowd in that area where the fish are schooling. So give the commercial boats a lot of room because when they hook a fish, they like to make a tight turn. Another consistent spot is the Loran Tower Ledge, 68 to 75 feet of water off Hope Sound, and also in 100 feet of water straight out of Boynton Inlet. 
Live blue runners, goggle eyes, and Spanish sardines are the top baits. Fish them on a stinger rig with number four copper wire, a 4.0 VMC circle hook in the front, a 2.0 VMC treble hook for the trailer. Um, and you can also use live mullet or thread fins. And hook up uh, jigs make a ribbon fish rig. You can hook up with dead, ri dead ribbon fish and troll them. That's a great lure for big fish. If you're looking for a smoker, live jumbo blue runners or small blue fish will get the bite. Average kings right now seem to be 20, oh, let's say 12 to 20 pounds. A lot of 30 pounders in the mix and some 40 showing up every day. All right, Mike, let's go inshore, bud. Well, the white butterflies are crossing the Indian River. The great egrets have that bright chartreuse color on their faces, so the snook bites on in my region. The fish haven't completely pushed out of the deeper water areas that they spend the winter in, so that means places like the St. Lucie River, the Turning Basin in Fort Pierce, the Ermine River, and the Loxahatchee River in Palm Beach County. That's where those big fish will be. With the warmer weather, those fish will be pounding mullet on the seawalls and on the docks at first light. And then as the day goes on, they'll get on the shorelines over the white sandy bottom and feed uh, you know, on, on the smaller bait fish. Throw topwater plugs or live mullet on the seawalls, cast a live shrimp or a four inch Houdini or copper juice colored bass and sea shad to those fish that are on the shorelines in the middle of the day. And then at night, the A1A bridge in Jupiter, the Roosevelt Bridge and the new Palm City Bridge in Stewart, north and south bridges in Fort Pierce, uh, you know, fish a live shrimp on a jig head or a uh, red tail hawks or a 3D minnow along the shadow lines. There's a lot of sub slot fish along the shorelines, but the bridges have got the big fish right now. So you're going to need 20 to 30 pound tackle. And the other thing that's really going on in my region is spotted sea trout. There's two essential things for a good sea trout bite in the Indian River right now. Healthy seagrass with sandy potholes and moving water. Find those two conditions in like two to four feet of water and you'll find all the sea trout you want. From the power lines to Midway Road on the west side of the Indian River, that's had a lot of two to six pound trout. The Spoil Islands north and south of Harbor Branch have all the school fish you want to mess with. That does uh, flat around the Bear Point Manatee Zone sign. Get an early start. That trout bite seems to be backing off about nine o'clock in the morning. And the thing to remember, the shrimp are running in the Indian River on the outgoing tides. So that drunk monkey colored saltwater assassin is just deadly right now. Match it up uh, with a 1 8 ounce jig head in either red or gold colors or a live shrimp under a poppy cork is going to do you well. Live pinfish and sand, sand perch are also good bites and don't be afraid to throw a topwater plug along the shoreline. Average trout in my region is going to be two to four pounds, but this time of year we get the giants. And when I talk giants, let me give you an idea what a giant is for my region. There's a photo there, that's the port live well on my Maverick Master Angler 21, and that's my foot in the photo. Both of those trout are over 31 inches in length. I kept them in the live well because I needed to shoot a photo of them, but we let them go. And that's, that's the kind of trout we find this time of year. All right, Mike, great saltwater report, but every week we're going to talk about fresh water, so give me what's happening in the bass world. Man, you know what, I was talking to Captain Mike Schellen out of Okeechobee. He told me the bass fishing on the, on the big lake has just been fantastic. The fish are about done spawning. They're starting to move to those outside grass lines. The big key is to find the clear water, which is usually on the leeward side of the lake. Then when you find that water fish, spinner bait with either a gold or a white willow leaf blade. You can start the day throwing top water plugs in the shiner colors, or you can fish a golden brim colored die dapper in the grass. Then go to a June bug colored tap out worm and work those outside edges of the grass lines. Places like King's Bar, Second Point, the Monkey Box, and, and the grass line out in front of JNS are all holding fish when the water's clear. The guys that are throwing lures are catching 20 or more fish a morning. The guys that are fishing shiners are doubling that number. You can fish all day. The bite's been going on all day. Uh, average bass is one to four pounds. So, you know, Lake Okeechobee's hot. The weather's not. The bite's going on, guys. Great report, Mike. Thank you so much from the East region, the Bennett Auto Supply region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Waterway Cafe East Hotspots from Mike's region. In short, spotted sea trout on the west side of the Indian River from the power lines to Midway Road. Shrimp under a popping cork, live mullet, drunk monkey saltwater sea shads, and topwater plugs on the outgoing tide has been best. And then offshore, dolphin in 130 to 400 feet of water, troll ballyhoo or swimming mullet along the rips and weed lines. Northerly winds have produced the best fishing. Now we have another event, Bree, in yeah. the East region. We're going to be at Marine Supply in Winter Haven, April 24th, starting at 3 p.m. Jeffrey Page and I will be there. We'll have the Jaeger uh, Etts there. We'll have a lot of cool stuff. Great event to go to. I'll be there. 
You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. That's right. <laughs> and speaking of being there, yeah. let's talk a little bit about some of your fishing endeavors. We are hired you certainly not just because you're another beautiful face, oh, but thanks. because you have tremendous fishing experience. So let's talk a little bit about that. We got some photos we want to show everybody. Oh, tremendous. I would absolutely love to talk about my fishing experience and my history. Uh, I was actually born right here in Miami, and I've been back and forth between Florida and California for the past 10 years pursuing my acting career. I've been fishing pretty much all of my life uh, between here and California. Um, but just like all of you watching, I love being in the outdoors and on the water, whether that's surfing, diving, boating, and yes, of course, fishing. <laughs> <laughs> being on the water is simply where I'm the happiest, and that's why I'm so excited to be calling this my new job. Anyways, that is enough about me. However, I have been fishing with a bunch of the captains, haven't I? Look at Absolutely. all these photos. You've got, you've got photos for days. I have so many photos. Well, let's fish. Okay, well, don't go away, my lovely anglers. We'll be right back with Jeffrey Page in the Central West region, and we'll hear what Kobe at Catching Secrets Dave Farrell has for us in his Off the Deep Bend report. There's Spring so much more back. to come on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. We're ready, man. Spring is back, and so are the Cobia. Let's go the get them. The Florida em. Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy. Find new roads. Best parts, best prices. Bennett Auto Supply. Yeti Coolers. Wildly stronger. Keep ice longer. CCA Florida. The voice of recreational anglers for over 25 years. Contender Boats. Performance through innovation. Humminbird. Simply, clearly, better. And King Sailfish Mounts. www.kingsailfish.com The Chevrolet Cruze, loved in 119 countries around the world. Proof we're not so different after all. It's the new world. Yamaha's next generation V6 four strokes are changing the game. Mid range power was awesome. Fuel, the burn, it's unbelievable. I couldn't believe the speed and the fuel economy is pretty impressive. I, mean, I couldn't believe the power. It was like a. Just. I was more like doing a quarter mile on a drag strip. And them things are like it's a whole other game. So I made the switch. Experience the difference for yourself during the Yamaha Discover V6 Offshore Demo Tour. See why we call it the game changer. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. Continuing the revolution, faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records, or time on the water with the family, or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. Now it's time to go over the news and notes from the FWC. To start, April 4th through the 6th is the Youth Turkey Hunt in Wakulla County. On April 5th, you can check out America's boating course in Fort Lauderdale, Lake Park, Key West, and Rockledge, Florida. Also on April 5th is Exotic Pet Amnesty Day in Melbourne. That sounds like a lot of fun. For more information and events, you can go to myfwc.com. Now it's time to go off the deep end. Well, Dave, we're back here at the Jägermeister workbench and back once again. birds off the deep end. Hummingbird. Cool. Hummingbirds off the deep end. So let's that. talk a little bit about Kobe's Dave. Well, well, you know, the the brown clown, we got a little uh, mount here of him. You get to see how big and powerful built he is, you know, and that's that's one of the reasons why we pursue him is because when you get him on, you know you got a big fish on. He's got a big broad tail, big stocky body like an amberjack. Right. You know, he's a 
a, a formidable opponent, so especially when we use like light spinning gear, which is what we're, we're fishing with. You know, we say it's, you know, 20, 30 pound. That's kind of, you know, light for me, but big for other, other fellows. So no, I hear what, you. what we're going to be doing is uh, when these cobia come in during the springtime, they move from the wrecks. Most of the year they're on the wrecks offshore and the wrecks and the reefs. They're a bottom fish and we catch them. You catch a lot of them just fishing with uh, even a, a big old uh, snapper rig right. or a grouper rig. You catch right. tons of cobias during the, the year for that. But when we start targeting them is during the springtime when they come really close into shore, they're doing their, their uh, spawning migration. And like Patty said, uh, up in the panhandle, they go from the east to the west. And we got a, right now they got a good southeast wind, which is just perfect. Because if the wind blows into their face, they'll go down and you can't see them. And this is a sight fishery. Even over here on the, on the east coast where we live, we're sight fishing them, swimming you know, in a 30, 50 foot of water range, clear water, we're looking for them. You have to have a really good pair of sunglasses and it's better if you can get high as you can up off the water. You know, the more elevation you get, the further you can see. And you can see that fish there, he's got these big pecs on him. Mm -hmm. He looks a lot like a shark. Right. A brown, you know, they're brown silhouette, and he looks a lot like a shark when he has those pecs out. So you'd be careful not to be throwing in your jigs, and you'll lose them to sharks. A so shark's lead a jig, or all right. A, or so a, speaking of that, that's one of the things we're going to use. We're going right. to use a jig, right? This is a, a bright colored Frank Hilton octopus jig. This uh, pretty much I bought that up there at half hitch tackle up in Destin. That's what all the boys are throwing the same kind of stuff. This is a, a full jig instead of a half jig. Uh, means you can throw it a little further. You can see it's got a really strong hook on it. And that's the kind of hook you're going to need because that cobia, like I said, is really strong. It's like catching a big amberjack. And when you get a hold of the leader, that's when they get off a lot. And if you're, if you're not using a thick enough hook, you can actually pull the hook and, you know, straighten out the hook because they fight really hard right close to the boat, all the way up to the boat. And that's one of their, you know, that's one of their big reputations is, you know, when you go to stick a cobia with a gaff or something, you better have a place to put it because he's going to put a whooping on you if you don't get him in the ice really quick. That's good. That's also a good suggestion. Now, Dave, they have a very rough mouth, as you know. Right. So what size leader do you think you can get away with? Obviously, well, clear you could go, water. You could go down to 30 pound, but I would go, you know, 50, 60 pound leader, depending on the size of the fish you're catching. If you're catching 25, 30 pound cobia like the ones over here, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader will suffice because they, although they have a rough mouth, it's not really sharp teeth like a mackerel or something. And so what you're going to do is when you're using a live bait versus the jigs, you're going to want to use a circle hook and you want to use a, at least a 2X, you know, an 8 dot size about you know, you can't really say ADOT because circle hooks are all different sizes. Right. You want to try to match it to your bait. You don't want a giant hook hanging out the face of your eel or your mullet. You want to match it to the size of the bait. But you want to use a circle hook because, you know, even though we're wanting to keep these fish, sometimes you'll catch an undersized one and we want to let him go. And if we have enough in the boat, we can still keep catching them with the circle hooks and, and, and let them go, you know, if, if, if we've got enough. One last question. How do you like to eat them? Because I certainly do. Well, you know, I like them every way. I like them I probably grilled is probably my favorite way, but I also like them cubed up into like one inch chunks and deep fried. I mean, that's, you know, you fry a shoe, I'll eat it. I, I love just about anything fried, so As a, it's hard to beat a cobia fried. Great segment over here at the Hummingbird off the deep end. Yeah, you're I, I, I need man. to get up. I need to get up and see my brother and start yeah, you chasing do. him. That's what I need to do. Uh, I good job, bud. Cobia, that is. Hey, Bree. You got to keep this train a rolling. So where are we going? I will. Right after Dave cooks me up some fried cobia. That sounds <laughs> amazing. All right, let's check in with Captain Jeff Page in the Central West region. Jeff, it is a shame the weather didn't want us to fish together last week, but I'm sure looking forward to next week. Maybe we'll catch some brown bombers. What do you think? We may just do that. The weather is beautiful this week. Cobias in our Central West region, uh, Bree. Usually, 75% of the time, the guys find them out on the offshore refs, wrecks, reefs, springs. And, you know, it's a lot of times while they're bottom fishing for groupers, snappers, amberjacks. I heard Dave mention amberjack. And that's why they'll always have a, a free line ready to throw at one that maybe follows a grouper or a snapper up. But we do have a migratory push of fish that usually start late March, mid-March, and goes through April. And they can be found right along the beaches, holding on any type of reef or hard bottom. A couple areas that I can just pinpoint out for you guys are the Roar or Silvertooth Reef off Sarasota. Down to the south, there's a big rocky area off of North Venice called Casey Key, and there's an area called Grassy Point. 
And then right off the Venice jetty, there's some, there's some old rubble out there that guys find shark's teeth at all the time. And that's a known cobia spot. But more importantly is when you find those kingfish and those Spanish mackerel following those thread fin schools, pay attention then because those cokes can be right mixed in with them and they're really easy to catch. I heard Dave talking about jigs. Jigs are great, but I prefer to have a live pinfish or a big hand-picked shrimp um, on a either a three or four oh circle hook or a nice quarter to half ounce hookup jig head and just nose hook him or uh, hook the shrimp through the horn and get it out in front of the cobia and nine times out of 10, he's going to eat it. I have a couple photos tonight. First photo is of 12-year-old A.J. Grande with a nice Kobe he caught a couple weeks ago with his dad, Jason Grande, and he caught it on fly, Rick, and they probably saw a half dozen that day, and A.J. finally got the right shot and got that, that Kobe to eat a fly. Great to see kids fishing. Tell me about this other picture, Jeffrey. Second photo is beautiful lady Diane Bullard with her first cobia, and she caught it at the other end of the spectrum on a hand-picked shrimp rigged on a hookup jig head, threw it out in front of the cobia, and he ate it. All right, well, let's keep moving. Let's go offshore. Mangrove snapper, nice mangrove snapper are holding on wrecks and ledges, according to Captain Jason Cheryl of Bad Habit Fishing Charters out of Siesta Key, Florida. And what Jason's been doing, he's been starting at 75 feet, working his way out to 120, and he's, he's got cut frozen sardines as well as uh, live pinfish and live select shrimp. And he's been finding the uh, better mangs when the wa weather warms in a little shallow. I mean, excuse me, out a little deeper. And then when we get these cold fronts like we've been having every week, they push in a little closer. But they've been averaging, oh, six to eight pounds. And then once in a while, he'll get an eight and a half, nine pounder. Right. Rolling inshore. Go ahead. Pomp Species one, pompano, lots of pompano in the entire region. To the north part of my region, guys are catching them on on the Silly Willy style pompano jigs around the bridges up in Upper Tampa Bay, all the way down to Dick Meisner Bridge, and then the inlets dumping out into the Gulf, Bunces Pass, Johns Pass, Passage Key, and then down to the south part of my region in Sarasota, in Big Pass, and Stump Pass down in Englewood. The guys are catching them on the 3 8 synthetic hair pompano jig you helped develop in the hookup. Uh, yellow with a red tie on it or pink and white. Species 2, sheephead. Nice sheephead coming in and all our inlets. You notice I've been keying in on the inlets inshore because it's a sure bet still. Water temperatures in the 60s. Lots of sheepies on the docks, bridges from Stump Pass, North Anna Maria Island. And the key's been moving water, Rick. Live shrimp or fiddler crabs on a small, light number one light wire hook with a split shot if the current's strong and get it down on that bottom. Get your boat positioned right, 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. I've got a photo tonight of Christina of Ocala with a really nice sheepy she caught with me about a week ago. All right, great report from the uh, Startron region. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the tires hey, plus you guys, get your hot truck. truck. All right, good job, Jeffrey. Inshore, he says, speckled trout, big specks hitting on the topwater uh, chrome skitter walks, as well as chartreuse and silver mirrodines in and around those mullet schools in Lemon Bay. And then offshore, amberjacks coming off the springs and the wrecks in 110 feet of water. Live pinfish or Williamson Vortex pink jigs are the best bet, Bree. Did you say pink? I said pink. I love pink. Okay, coming up next on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing <laughs> Report, we are heading on down to the Florida Keys and the Southeast region. Plus, we have a guest from Chevy Trucks, so don't go away. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. Guy Harvey Clothing by Aftco. Crokies, made in the USA. Drummond Community Bank. Costa, see what's out there. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. What is CCA? CCA has been representing recreational fishermen for over 25 years, and when your rights to fish are threatened, the CCA is there to make sure government regulators are making sound decisions. 
I'm a life member of CCA, and when fishery decisions are being made, the CCA in the room is fighting for our recreational rights. We need to give our kids the same opportunities to fish as we did. Do what I did. Go to CCAFlorida.org and join for only $25 so you can protect your recreational angling rights. Hi, I'm Harold Bennett. My dad started Bennett All Spy over 57 years ago. Things have changed since then. We've grown to 33 stores and opened a 93,000 square foot distribution center. But one thing has stayed the same, our focus on the customer. That's why we have the most knowledgeable parts specialists in the business and we only offer quality auto parts at the guaranteed lowest prices. The next time you need anything for your vehicle, think Bennett Auto Supply. Best parts, best prices, Bennett Auto Supply. A man, a man and his truck, and tofu. And veggie burgers and raw kale salad. All fine. Just not today. Whatever you do. Introducing High Country, the premium Silverado. Do it good. Silverado, 2014 North American Truck of the Year. Fish Dock, the total saltwater experience, returns to New Smyrna Beach this Memorial Day weekend. Bring the whole gang to Riverside Park for an incredible family experience. Tournaments, boat shows, seminars, kids clinics, chowder cook-off, and the Fish Dock 5K Fun Run. Visit fishdock.com to register for the new Bill Fish Open, the Offshore Striker Tournament, or the Redfish Trout Challenge for your chance to win thousands in cash, prizes, and much more. Fish Dock, Memorial Day weekend in New Smyrna Beach. Don't miss this one. Well, we're here with Ed Bailey from Chevrolet, Edward Bailey, I'm sorry, but Ed, <laughs> you know, we've been friends and that's why I call you Ed, but let's talk a little bit about 10 years of being partners in the Fishing Report. Well, Rick, it is so glad to be back for season 10. It's been an exciting program. You and I have been friends for the whole 10 years and it's great to start the show 10 years, but it's nice to see that it's lasted these 10 years and, and it's been a wonderful ride and I wish you all the luck this year with Bree who it's already started off to be a little bit of a character. Yeah, you got to love that. But speaking of a nice ride or a great ride, let's talk about this high country. Well, that's the fun part. I get to come here and show you all the new product. And last year we introduced on your show, first truck in Florida, the all new Silverado. Even Mr. Farrell bought one this last year. But today we have the high country, which is the premium edition of the LTZ. Uh, it's a great truck. Uh, it's a great year for the truck too, because just three months ago, this truck won the North American truck of the year at the Detroit Auto Show, which you, know, you can't get any better claim than that from 49 automotive journalists all around the country and world, which by the way, we also got the North American car of the year with the all new Corvette Stingray, which I know you'd look good in, just wouldn't tell your boat real well. <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> now, Ed, what else do we have coming out of the Chevy camp in the truck line? Suburban, do we have a big HD in this body style? Well, what the trucks got? have been obviously in a great evolution because we got the all new Tahoe and Suburban that are hitting the street basically this month. So that's a great news story. If you've seen those, they are just total premium. They are literally just an office on wheels. But the even more exciting story is coming out this August, September time frame. We'll have it probably right at the end of the season for you is the all new Colorado to finish our three truck strategy. The Colorado, the light duty Silverado you see here and the heavy duty Silverado, which we've also introduced here this first quarter of 2014. Well, thank you so much for coming down to see us. More importantly, for all the support over those 10 years, we couldn't have done it without you. Yeah. But we also can't do it without Bree. So Bree, hey, where are we going? Hey, well, <laughs> thanks for that, Ed. Now to the most southern region where no shoes, shirts, or problems are allowed. Let's chat with Captain Randy Town in the Keys region about the Cobia down in Paradise. Hey, fish fans, good evening. You know, Cobias in my region, we have them up and down the Keys from Key Largo to Key West, and we also have the other side of the highway, the Gulf. And we've got two different species of, of Cobias. You can fish for them on the Atlantic, by um, driving around with your tower boat along Hawks Channel, you're going to want to look for these fish on the top of stingrays. They swim um, on top of the rays, so you've got to have some visibility. You've got to get up so you can see down into the water and see these fish on top of the stingrays. Now, a live grunt, a live pinfish, that's a great bait on the Atlantic side. You're going to want to have a heavy spinning rod, maybe with a three or four ounce lead and a short piece of 80 pound leader to get down to that fish because they're going to be in deeper water. But once you get on them, a lot of times there's a school of fish there and you can catch some really nice cobias doing that. 
Now, shifting gears going into the Gulf, you're talking about a whole different way of fishing for these fish. They're going to hang around structure, sometimes around markers, sometimes around uh, wrecks and things like that. So it's a little different when you approach these areas. You might see them laying around the wreck as you're approaching it. So have your rod ready with a bait so that if you see these fish as you're approaching the wreck, you can cast to them. And then sometimes once you're anchored down and you've been there for a little while, they'll come up with some of the other fish you might be catching, like a bull shark or something like that. So you need to be prepared and have your rods ready, have your bait ready, and these cobias could show up at any time, but you got to be ready for them. All right, Randy, let's go ahead and go inshore, bud. You know, or actually, stay, we're staying offshore with a yellowtail. I'm sorry. Let, let's talk about the yellowtails. You know, this is one of the most popular fish we have down here. And pretty much throughout the year, you can target yellowtails. The key to successful yellowtailing is having a good condition, having the current going behind the boat where you have uh, your chum will work for you. If your current's going up the anchor line, it's not going to work. So the yellowtail is really condition-driven. And if you have that condition, anchor down, Anywhere from 40 to 70 feet, start with a large hole chum bag. I like a 25-pound block of chum when I start. And you want to be patient. That's very important when you're yellowtailing is not to put a bunch of lines in the water and start fishing right away. Let your chum work for you. Let these fish up, come up to the boat and let them get a little closer and a little more. And then just catch them one at a time, and you'll certainly catch uh, a lot of a lot of uh, yellowtails and probably your limit I've got a picture of a photo that uh, was taken a while back fishing with the Florida Insider Fishing Report ladies and uh, it was nice to have them out on the water catching these great yellowtails. Look at Bree photo no. bombing you man holy cow. Speaking <laughs> of the bomb let's talk about the inshore fishing in the Florida Keys region bud. You know, the red fishing in our back country has remained pretty strong. Throughout the year, our red fishing's gotten real popular. And then there's two ways to do this. If you have a technical pulling skiff where you can get up real shallow, there's plenty of areas where these redfish are going, and you can sight cast to them, great with a fly rod, great with a, with a spoon or something like that, or throw in a soft plastic. And then if you have a bigger boat, like a bay boat, you're going to rely more on the shorelines or the, the runoffs or the deeper areas where these fish are going to congregate on like a low tide. You know, a quarter-ounce hookup with a pinfish or a shrimp on it is a great bait for these redfish when they're in these channels. You just want to look for that current falling into the deeper area if you've got a bigger boat, and you're probably going to find a redfish somewhere in there. I've got a photo of young Christopher Manley fishing with me the other day, catching one of many redfish. All right, Randy, you got a strange second inshore species. Explain it to me. You know, when you look at kingfish as a backcountry or an inshore species, you know, it doesn't sound right because they're not on the flats. But like I said earlier with the cobias, we have the Gulf of Mexico in our backyard. So we've got the best of both worlds, both Atlantic and Gulf. And this time of year, springtime's a great time to catch these big kingfish out in the Gulf of Mexico. And there's been quite a few of them out there, anywhere from 11 to 20 feet of water. If you can find anything like a submerged uh, wreck, a rock pile, uh, sometimes you can even find birds on a school of Spanish mackerel, and a lot of these big kingfish are mixed up with them. So you get out on some of these wrecks, you want to anchor down, you want to start chumming, just put a chum bag over and see what comes up, maybe ballyhoos, maybe blue runner. Now a lot of times these kingfish will come up as you're sitting there trying to catch other things. Now I've got a picture of Captain Tom DeMoss with a 30 pound kingfish we caught and that particular day we caught kingfish up to 60 pounds in 15 feet of water. All right, great report from the Florida Keys region. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the La Jolla hot spots from the Florida Keys. Captain Randy says inshore tarpon. Fish the live mullet under a cork or on the bottom around all the local bridges. And then offshore, yellowtail anchoring 40 to 60 feet where you have good current, chum heavy, and be patient, fish one rod at a time, just like he taught you, Bree. Yes, he did. That was a fun day. I loved it there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's time to tell you about some tournaments in the Florida Keys. All right, the Key West Sailfish Championship, set for April 23rd to the 27th, offers a $50,000 first place prize in the Pro Division and $15,000 for the top finisher in the non-Pro Division. 
Next is the Redbone at Large Sunrise to Sunset Tarpon Tournament, scheduled for April 25th through 27th in Isla Mirada. It features general, spin or plug, and fly divisions with fishing timetables in early morning and evening hours. The Tarponian Tarpon Tournament, set for April 30th to May 2nd in Marathon, is a three-evening tournament with teams fishing with a different captain each evening. Teams also rotate among three major bridge channels in Marathon. And lastly, the Marathon Offshore Bull and Cow Dolphin Tournament, set for May 1st to the 4th, offers up a $10,000 first prize to the angler catching the largest bull and cow combined, as well as prizes awarded to anglers catching the largest dolphin, wahoo, tuna, triple tail, grouper, and snapper. I just got hungry. Man. All right. <laughs> and now it's time to check in with Andy Newman in the Florida Keys. Well, Bree, welcome to the show. And Rick, good to be back with you for another exciting year reporting on the tournament and event scene in the fabulous Florida Keys. Now, this weekend launches the 49th annual Key West Fishing Tournament. But if you can't fish in the tournament pickoff event, don't worry. You have eight more months to get into the competition. Now, this tournament runs through November 30th, and it's open to the general public. And participants can target 37 species of fish with divisions for men, women, junior anglers, and even peewees. Visiting and resident anglers to Key West and the Lower Keys can enter their catches for free at various tournament way stations. And all anglers receive certificates noting their catches and qualify for prizes. More details at keywestfishingtournament.com. And, of course, information on fishing activities and accommodations in the Florida Keys is always at flakeys.com. One more thing, if you're in the Keys early Saturday morning, the Seven Mile Bridge will temporarily close the traffic between 6.45 a.m. and 9 a.m. for the annual Seven Mile Bridge run. Rick? Thanks for the update there, Andy. Marie? Thanks. Okay, now, Rick, we're going to go hit up the southeast region with Captain Jimbo Thomas. Oh, boy. I uh, know. And he's going to be telling us all about the Cobia catches on the Thomas Flyer. Jimbo, how's that beautiful boat been treating you? Hey, Bree, how you hey. doing? I'm oh, hey, hey, Rick, how are you also? I'm all right, hey. Jimbo. Thanks for the acknowledgement. <laughs> Appreciate you knowing I'm here. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, most of the cobias that we catch here in the southeast region, they're an incidental catch while kite fishing or dropping live baits down on the wrecks. But when we do target the cobia, we look for them around the channel markers, buoys, as well as artificial reefs and wrecks. And then they also like to follow big stingrays, leatherback turtles, whale sharks, and even big bull sharks. Now they follow the stingrays to eat all the small fish, shrimp, and crabs that are scooped off the bottom as the stingray glides along. But as to why they follow the turtles and sharks is a mystery to me. Now cobia can be caught year round, but October through May is when most of them are caught. We start to find them on the stingrays in October, and then in April and May is when they are most commonly found on the turtles and the sharks. Now when they're usually when we do find them, they're usually not real picky on what they eat. We usually like to use live pinfish or grunts, but any good live bait will work along with live crabs. Jigs with the twister tail or eel tail also are very effective. 20-pound tackle is the norm with a 50-pound monofilament leader and a circle hook. Now, in the past week, there's been cobias caught on leatherback turtles out in the blue water, and we did have one swim by us the other day, and we caught, caught four of them. Uh, we got four baits out there, caught four of them, four keepers, that is. And then there's also been some whale shark sightings with cobias. And the average size is 20 to 50 pounds, but they do get much larger than that. I got a photo here. This is Maggie Thomas and her friend Stephanie with the 31-pound cobia that we caught off the back of a stingray aboard the Thomas Flyer. Now, right. staying offshore. Go ahead, ready. Jimbo. Keep going, right, baby. offshore. After a slow start to our sailfish season, the fish have finally showed up and just in time for the Yamaha Contender Miami Billfish Tournament, which takes place this weekend out of the Miami Beach Marina. If anybody's interested, it's open to the public this weekend. It's a great time. But for the last two and a half weeks, the sailfish have been biting. Wherever you can find North Kern and Blue Water, that's where the best fishing is going to be. They've been biting throughout the region. Aboard the Thomas Flyer, we've been kite fishing with live herrings, goggles, and pilchards. I've been fishing from government cuts south of Fowey Light in 100 to 250 feet of water. We're using 20-pound tackle with a 50-pound mono leader and a 6-0 to 7-0 circle hook. And on the calm days with no wind, we've been slow trolling those live baits out of the outriggers. Also, keep an eye out for free jumping sails. If you can get your base out in the area where they're jumping, there's a good chance to get a bite out of them. Our best day since they started biting is 10 catch and releases. 
but there have been reports of boats catching way more than that. The best fight's going to be early in the morning and the late afternoon. And in between the sailfish fights, we've had some nice mahi and kingfish mixed in. Now, moving inshore, we're going to go with sea trout in the south and north Biscayne Bay. I've been talking with Captain Alan Sherman. He's been fishing up in North Biscayne Bay, the grass flats in North Biscayne Bay, from Venetian Causeway north to Holliver Inlet, and then in the south end, look for sea trout on the west side of the bay in the gables by the sea area. Now, Alan Sherman, he's been having the most success fishing small live pilchards under a Cajun Thunder or gulp shrimp on a quarter-round soak-up jig head under that Cajun Thunder. On the calm days, he's been fishing surface uh, or uh, jerk-style Rapalas, in black or green backs. That's been the most productive. And look for these sea trout on the flats with good moving water and three to six feet uh, depth range. And some of these trout have been up to five pounds and the larger fish are being caught up in the north end of the bay. Then we've also got some tarpon showing up in and around the inlets of the region. Been talking to my buddy, Captain Bouncer Smith. He's been drifting big live shrimp through government cut on 20 pound tackle, using 80 pound mono leader with a 5-0 to 6-0 circle hook. And then the best fishing is going to be early in the mornings and then late in the evenings. And the tide hasn't been a factor as long as you got some moving water. These fish have been in the 60 to 100-pound range. Now also look for those tarpon rolling or mark them on your fish finder on both the north or south side of your favorite inlet, and then you'll have a lot less boat traffic also there. Now tarpon are also being caught around the bridges of the intercoastal waterway using big live shrimp, you want to fish them at night along the shadow lines. All right, great report there, Jimbo. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Captain Harry's region. Let's see what we got going inshore. Look for the big sea trout on the grass flats of North Biscayne Bay. Use surface lures and small live pilchards. And then offshore, fish live herring or goggle eyes under a kite in 120 to 200 feet of water for a mixed bag of sailfish, mahi, and kingfish. Now, Bree, May 15th, we've got a CCA event at the IGFA in Dania, so I want to invite everybody to come out and see us because we'll certainly be there. That'll be fun. It's a beautiful building. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it is. All right, coming up next on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we're going to go check out some new products with Dave Farrell at the workbench and then head on over to the Southwest region. There's much more to catch on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. A shoe. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Hookup Lures, premium lures for serious anglers. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Guy Harvey, artist, explorer, marine scientist, conservationist, diver, and fisherman. La Jolla Resort, a place for family and fishermen. Maverick Boat Company, makers of premium boat brands. Maverick, Hughes, and Pathfinder. Navionics, we start where the road ends. Strike Zone Fishing. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. You know there's more to it than luck. There's fishing the right bait, the water temperature, the wind, the season, and then there's the boat. We'll put it simply, the boat matters. To own a contender is to own the best sport fishing boat on the market, period. Contender offers the most comprehensive model range with bigger, faster, and more fuel-efficient boats than the competition. There's only one choice for serious anglers. Contender Boats. Performance through innovation. Suffolk Safe 32 is constructed with seven strands of Dyneema and a single strand of Gore Performance Fiber. It's the roundest, longest casting line in the world. It offers superior abrasion resistance so you can fish it anywhere. It's the strongest, most sensitive, and durable small diameter braid ever to hit the water. Nice fish, Brett. Thanks. Suffix 832. Always use the best line.
You know what's crazy, Dave? For no. 10 years, we've been talking and stroking new products, and I'm gonna tell you, over here at the Jägermeister Workbench, we're gonna keep doing that. Why so not? So what are we gonna do? talk about tonight? Well, first off, we're gonna talk, this is a big uh, gauge waterproof bag. I have a little flat skiff that doesn't have a whole lot of dry storage on it. I bring this big joker along. This is a 105 liter. It's called a Shackleton. It's, it's humongous. You could probably fit you in there. And we could certainly put Brie could, in there. Yeah, we got Brie the could fit in there two or three times. But, but you know, it's a great uh, waterproof bag. It's made out of uh, nice 100% PVC tarpaulin fabric. It's a, uh, you know, it's got the Velcro and the roll down. So you know, when you Velcro it together, then you roll it and then make the secure connection on the ends. And it, it's not gonna, no water's gonna get in that thing. So I can just toss it in the bottom of my skiff and I don't have to worry about it. Also, if you got a bunch of stuff in it and you don't want to carry it by the straps, it's got a little oh, uh, pocket cool. on the back that you could come so out with some, put, uh, make it a backpack. Put it on a backpack. Yeah, you make I it, got it turn you. it into a backpack. Exactly, but I you got have you. to, yeah, it's pretty cool. Something like that. Yeah, you have to put, you have to attach the bottom on I know, of but you know. You're not gonna be able to do it. I didn't want to mess up my mic. <laughs> but anyway, that thing's really cool. It's made by uh, Gage Grundens. You know, go to grundens.com and get you a waterproof bag. Cool. Also, we have some Sperry shoes. These are the H2Os, you know, and I'm, I tell, you know, a lot of guys like to fish barefoot, and uh, I, especially when you're offshore fishing, it's not a good idea. Uh, bad things can happen to your feet, you know, wahoo coming into the boat, uh, a kingfish even, they got some sharp, nasty teeth, and they can take your toes off, but not only that, you don't have any really good grip, you know, and if you're out in the water and standing around in a bunch of wet decks, you know, you got to have some good shoes, and Sperry has made their living on making good water shoes, and uh, with this nice, very adaptive wade siping on the on the bottom, you get these H2Os, you're not going to slip, that's for sure. They're incredibly light, they dry very fast, they have a removable liner inside, you know, the antibacterial and all that stuff. They say they won't stink. I've never been able to not stink up a pair of shoes, so <laughs> they're still nice, though, and I, and I would I would wear these, and I'm going to wear them. Actually, I'm going... Okay, now Dave, on the show, we have talked about soaking corks. Yep. You <clears> have <throat> now taken this to a new yeah. all-time Well, these, high. these are the Ready Rig release floats. And, oh. and, and what these are made for is that you can set these, uh, you, know, you put your line out, if you're drifting or something, you get it at the depth you want, attach your bobber at that time, you, can, you know, attach this to the main line, mm -hmm. and then you've got a little doohickey on the bottom when you squeeze this down, it opens up and you right. put your line in there around here and that goes to your bait get a bite now the it comes slides. disconnect and this slides Correct. up it disconnects from the bottom All and right it'll, it'll slide up and down so you can fight your fish without having to fight the weight too you're not leaving a balloon in the water Very it's a good environmentally pretty cool safe. cool thing if you're sword fishing or doing any kind of uh controlled depth trolling what do we got here bud well these are a lot of our williamson uh hand tools these are the the nice fillet fillet knives they're making this is the big eight inch straight fillet knife. That's the tapered one here. I'm gonna be able to pull it out of there. But these things are razor sharp. They're made with uh, European stainless steel. The same company that makes the Rapala fillet knives right. makes these. Uh, super incredible sharp, very nice er ergonomic handles, good rubber grips on them. These are their new uh, double hinge pliers. You know, if, uh, if, you, if you like the, the cutter in the middle, it's a good, good pair of pliers for that. Nice needle nose, long very made out of really good materials won't rust on you You still got to rinse them off you always got to rinse everything off if you're going to be fishing in salt water but uh williamson's coming out with some really cool hand tools trying to straighten everybody out all right well you're going to have to save the chum and the line for we'll do it next week next or week whenever week you after, come in. whenever yeah. i come back all right all right well good luck in guatemala i know you're going down to yeah. casa vieja lodge we're and gonna catch some marlin, marlin you yeah we're gonna good for tear you. them up hey send me some pictures from down we there. will instagram me we'll do it all right, speaking of Instagram, you were my Instagram woman crush Queen. this past week, uh, <laughs> Bree. So, you know what? Why don't you keep on going? I uh, will. We're going to go have a chat with Captain Ron Houston over in the Southwest region. Ron, the weather also didn't want us to fish this past weekend. That was so sad. But how are the copia conditions looking now? Well, like always, it's great to be back for the 2014 season. And I also would like to welcome the CCA to my region. It's something everybody needs to look at and get involved in, especially for our future. But, you know, the cobia in my region, typically most cobia are caught on the wrecks or on some type of structure all through the region. But on the inshore side, a little further to the north from Sanibelo Stump Pass, these fish can be caught along grass flats, sandbar edges, beaches, and mouth of the passes. Also look for these fish to be following large bait pods or big schools of rays. Now, whether it's offshore or inshore, baits of choice can be just about anything once located. 
large live baits such as shrimp, crab, a variety of artificial chugging lures, especially bright colors. One of the good baits of choice is a good artificial eel, a variety of bucktails in yellow, white, or green, and also a variety of large soft plastics, six to nine inches. Typically, the cobia range in my region right now anywhere from 15 to 40 pounds, but there are some reported through the region right now up to 60 pounds. Now, in the, on the offshore side also, for the last five or six days, we've had inclement weather and, and getting out offshore has been tough. But the forecast looks great for the next couple days, especially into the weekend. Concentrate right now for the red groupers from Marco Island to Fort Myers Beach. Right now, it really ain't got to go too far. Concentrate in depth of 45 to 60 feet. You can work this two ways. You can drift or anchor up on hard bottom till you start finding some keeper-sized fish. Once you start finding keeper-sized fish, don't travel far. Work in that quarter-mile area. Keeper-sized fish generally hang with one another. Baits of choice can be live grunts. Pin fish, but the smelliest baits have been working best, according to what the captains have told me in the last couple of days. Cut baits are to include squid, herring, or sardines. Look forward to the weekend for the offshore. Should have no problem getting a limit on red groupers. Now, on the inshore side, we want to concentrate on the redfish. Here we are in the first week of April. We're still getting some minor fronts, but the, but the temperatures aren't getting real cold. Depending on fronts, clarity of water and barometric pressure, the grass flats and potholes in the Pine Island area, or the east wall from Alligator Creek to Burnt Store and Bull Bay. Concentrate on being stealthy, drifting or pulling with the wind to be stealthy. Once you start seeing some redfish, you can either anchor up, push a pole down. Baits of choice can include cut ladyfish or pinfish, but on those days that it's bluebird skies, especially since the front is still blowing through, black or silver spoons or a bass assassin four inch paddle tail, molting in color, try not to jig the lure, cast out, bring a steady retrieve, that's what that lure is designed to do. Also, a little further to the south, Bossman's River, the pavilion key for the speckled trout. Concentrate on the grass flats, edges at low water, and drifting the flats when the water's high. Basic choice can be live shrimp or pilchard, but simple soft plastics such as bass assassin's foreign paddle tails on a jig head or under a cork. Colors to include Mama's 14 carat, root beer, white or a sexy shad in color. And I'd like to welcome another new sponsor to the region, Florida Outdoor Experience. You guys are looking for that trophy, whether it's hunting or fishing. Look these guys up. They take pride in what they do. Ronnie, just like always, you're steady Eddie. You're a superstar. Thank you so much. Great report. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Florida Outdoor Experience hotspots from the Southwest region. Sheep's Head, Goodland to Wiggins Pass, fishing the intercoastal docks, rock piles, sea walls, bridge pilings using cut shrimp, and offshore, Triple Tails, Plover Key to Gordon's Pass, Nearshore Wrecks, Markers, Headpins, Swim Buoys, and most importantly, the Crab Traps, Bree. Sounds good. He mentioned Marco Island. I had my first kiss on Marco Island. You did? <gasps> yes. Don't swim away on us because coming up, we're heading a little north to the Central East region where I hear the Cobia are really making the captains work. And then zoom on over to the Northwest region. Stick around. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy, find new roads, Alukai, fit by nature, crafted by hand, best parts, best prices, Bennett Auto Supply, the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are, Rapala, catch the latest at rapala.com, Startron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems, and Yamaha, Reliability starts here. Chevy Silverado Heavy Duty, strong for all the roads ahead.
Continuing the revolution. Faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records, or time on the water with the family, or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of recreational fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things for your kids? If you're like me, you'll make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. For weekly reports from our nine captains and our latest events, make sure to check out our website at the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report.com. You can also like us on Facebook and even send us your photos. Plus, follow us on Instagram at Captain Rick Murphy and Official Insider. But while you're on our Facebook page, Rick, yeah. make sure to enter our Gear Up and Go Fish Giveaway where one lucky winner and their lucky guest will go on a fishing trip with Rick and I in Everglades National Park. The winner will also receive Guy Harvey, AFCO, Olakai, and Costa Gear. But you can only register on Facebook, so make sure you check that out. All the great stuff yes. over on the rack. I'm so I'm excited. telling you, we're going to talk about this, guys, for four or five weeks. But more importantly, you can't be registered for the contest mm -hmm. unless you like us both on Facebook and any other social media that you want to like us on. And I'm bringing my pink fishing pole with me. Okay, okay. I'm ready. All right, now let's talk with Captain Jim Ross about his cobia finds up there in Cocoa Beach. First, I want to thank you for having me on your radio show this past weekend. We had a lot to talk about, and some of it was about when we went out a few weeks ago sight fishing for triple tail and caught a pretty good size and very tasty one at that. Are you finding the same sight cast method to be helpful with your cobia catches, Jim? Well, Brie, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank and you. second of all, yeah, definitely. It's great to have you. And second of all, no, we're not doing as good on the triple tail right now as we had been earlier in the season. But I'll tell you what, the cobia are making their presence known right now in the Central East region. They're really starting to show up in fairly decent numbers. Now, they're following manta rays, or you can find them around bait pods in the 20 to 50 foot depths between Sebastian Inlet and Playa Linda Beach. The anglers fishing farther to the north towards ponds to concentrate on the reefs and wrecks in the 60 to like 120 foot depths. But keep looking for the manas in between stops because there's been a couple of manta rays up that way as well. Now live pogies rib, uh, rigged on a VMC 8 aught circle hook are an excellent choice to cast to these fish. And brightly colored hookup cobia jigs are also very popular. And you want to tip these with a strip of squid if the cobia get a little fussy and they won't hit the naked jig. Now, our other species, oh, I'll tell you what, I've also got a picture I forgot to talk about here. The Costa 580 sunglasses are a fantastic addition to any angler's uh, arsenal. And Arthur Ty and Jeff Hudson, it helped them to spot and land three nice cobia that they hit uh, with live shrimp on a VMC circle hook and 30-pound suffix 832 braid. If you guys haven't tried the 832, you need to get out there. Now, the, my second species offshore is dolphin. In this week's report, the dolphin are showing up, and they're up to about 15 pounds on the offshore trolling grounds right now. From about the Sebastian area, well, Sebastian's been the best area overall. They're, they're all through the region, but Sebastian's been the best. Now, Ballyhoo trolled on the western edge of the Gulf Stream or over the reef structures in 230 to 250 foot depths are doing the best right now. And you want to look for rips and weed patches in and along that edge of the, of the Gulf Stream. That seems to be holding the most dolphin. Pink and white, blue and white, and red and black Williamson lures over the top of those bally here are always a great way to enhance those baits when you're trolling them at four to six knots. Now, I tell you, the inshore bite is starting to pick up as well. Trout catches remain really good in the banana and Indian River between Pinita Causeway and Oslo Road in Vero Beach. Look for slot-sized fish in the three to five foot depths on the areas adjacent to either sandbars or the islands throughout that area. And either a white or a chartreuse colored hookup jig sprayed with bang scent is working really good. Or uh, shrimp scent uh, seems uh, on the, uh, I'm sorry, shrimp scent on those jigs seems to be working the best. You can also put a live shrimp on there if you want to, but you don't have to. The overslot trout right now are holding in less than two feet of water, and you want to look for them around those same islands or up around the rocky points or some of those mangrove color, color covered islands in the Cocoa Beach area. Now, our last species I'm going to talk about tonight is Pompano. They seem to be working their way up the beaches right now from Vero through Sebastian and all the way up to about the Melbourne area. Live sand fleas, peeled shrimp, 
uh, seem to be the two best baits. You want to try the high incoming tide that seems to be better than the lower tides right now. And that's where the pompano uh, seem to push into those troughs in those areas and start feeding pretty good. Now, boaters can also fish and get some action in those areas in that 10 to 20 foot depth just outside of the inlet and south of the, of the Sebastian Inlet area. You want to look for pods of glass minnows if you can find them. In that area, you need to throw a small pompano style jig with a nylon skirt because the pompano are actually feeding on the glass minnows in those locations. Hey, Jim, I got a question for you, bud. Your yes, region sir. certainly is the, probably the most famous region in all of Florida for monster redfish. Now, if a guy's watching the show, he's thinking about wanting to book a charter for a fish over 20 pounds, what time of year would you tell him to come see you? Well, right now, uh, Captain Fred Roberts is doing really well up in the Ponce area, right at the inlet. You can also catch some, some fish like that at the Sebastian Inlet itself on the outgoing tides. But for me, I don't really fish either of those that much. I have a tendency to fish in the Indian River, Banana River, Mesquite Lagoon. And generally, mid-May through mid-October is when I find them best, with August and September being the hottest time to get those big fish. All right, we book a day for me and Bree to come up. We want to shoot a Sportsman's Adventure episode, so let's talk about it. Great report this week. We're going to go ahead and look at the hookup hotspots from the East region. In short, Captain Jim says trout are feeding along the deeper edges of the islands in the Indian River near Vero Beach. Rig a live shrimp on a quarter ounce chartreuse hookup jig head. And then you want to fish those shrimp really close to the bottom. And then offshore, Cobia. 20 to 50 feet of water from Cocoa Beach to Vero Beach. Fish the bait pods and manta rays with live pogies or large hookup bucktail jigs. Now, Bree, yes. we have another event. What? May 25th wow. in New Smyrna. The infamous fish stock put on by the people at Sports Fishing Magazine, Marlin Magazine, Saltwater Sportsman, all of the magazines and all the people will be there. So we got to make sure we're there as well. That sounds like fun. All right. All right. Now we have Captain Jeff Hageman standing by coming to you from the Northwest region. Hey, Jeff, what's going on with the Cobia in the Gulf? It's good to be back before we get going with Cobia and welcome to the family. Uh, Thank you. Cobia this time of, you're welcome. The <laughs> Cobia this time of year, mostly offshore around the reefs and rock, uh, reefs and wrecks right now. You know, find most of those fish, like I said, offshore, but occasionally you'll have fish cruising the beaches, the passes, and a few on the flats. Uh, also, a good place to check is the, the cans and the channel markers throughout Tampa Bay and the shipping channel right there. Um, most of our big push of Cobia is a wintertime thing. And that time of year, you want to look for them in the warm water runoffs of our power plants. we got one in Anclote, the Crystal River Power Plant, of course, and the one in Tampa Bay. That time of year, you're going to look for fish cruising on the back of stingrays. As far as baits go, an artificial eel in that 10-inch um, black or moss back rigged on a three-quarter or half-ounce hookup jig head works really good. Or a pinfish tail hooked under a cork is really a hard bait for a cobia to pass up. And one of my favorites for throwing at, at sight casting for cobia is a big jumbo shrimp, if you can find them, hooked backwards on a hookup jig head. That's probably one of the best baits, and that's what they're following those stingrays around to kick up those, those shrimp or crabs is why they follow those rays around as they're moving across the flats. Also offshore, Captain Jason Leinberger of Ruthless Fishing Charters out of St. Pete's reports a great flounder bite right now. Most of the time you think of flounder inshore, but right now the fish are spawning, and they're anywhere from 25 to 35 feet of water. Now, what are you doing? He's getting around hard bottom areas, and he's fishing the sand areas just outside that hard bottom. He's getting up tight of it, casting jig heads back um, with a piece of shrimp on it or a little piece of belly meat. Macro works good. Anything that's got a smell to it, bonita strips are always good. And he's catching some really good doormat sized flounder all the way up to eight pounds. So, some great flounder great fish to eat and uh, a lot of fun out there catching those big ones inshore captain mario costello reports that the triple hotel are showing up right now around the crab buoys anywhere from 15 to 30 feet of water he's seeing a lot of them on grass lines and any kind of floating debris out there or, or flotsam he's using a live shrimp on a one aught to two aught circle hook vmc circle hook's been the way to go with that underneath the float or free lined um, also, another great bait is that clear DOA shrimp that will always do the trick. Now, he's bringing that a little different. He's taking the hook out of the front, moving it to the back and biting that tail off and using it as that shrimp swims 
right across that buoy or right across that uh, any kind of flotsam out there. He's just reeling it right past him and have him coming out and eat him. Also in shore, Captain Jamie Goodwin of GoFloridaFishing.com reports a great redfish right, bite right now on the top of the tide. He's fishing Lower St. Pete. And the top of the tide, the beginning of the out, outgoing, has been the key for these fish. That's when they're really turning on and eating well. Live bait, he says, has been the trick. They're wanting to chase bait down. So live sardines and a lot of them, so you can chum with them, has been getting the fish to really turn on and bite. Now, a little trick to fishing schooling redfish, you want to approach really slowly and stealthily as possible. Either get on your trolling motor on a real low speed, or you want to push pole in there to keep real quiet and sneak up on these fish. Also, long cast is another big trick to it. That 832 that Jim was just talking about, great line. We're using 10-pound test. You can cast a lot farther and make those long casts so those big schools don't spook off your boat and end up running into you. That's another good tip. And also, you want to throw outside the fish. You don't want to throw into the fish. Let the fish come to your bait. And I've got a photo here of some of you guys might know. And if you look real close, the spot on the tail has actually got a heart shape to it. And uh, I don't know which one of them more in love with that fish. Oh, what are you guys crushing on the redfish? You so guys, hard. you too. Oh man, that was so man. much fun. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, Jeff, great <laughs> report. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the Drummond Community Bank hotspots from the Northwest region. In short, redfish bite is on the top of the tide. Look for the schooling fish. Live baits have been working well. And then offshore, Spanish Max on the near shore wrecks and hard bottom. Look for the birds and the bait fish. Use spoons or live baits and chum bag. Hey, tell me a little bit about when you went fishing with Jeff, what mm -hmm. did you catch other than obviously that beautiful redfish? What did we catch other than that beautiful redfish? I only remember catching redfish because I swam with the thing. I got in the water, I caught it. You oh, caught. we caught trout and snook. See so snook. she goes fishing <laughs> with Captain Jeff Hagerman and she catches the inshore Grand Slam. Right, just the Grand Slam, no big deal. Just, yeah, just, but just, just the a... the fish was so amazing. I just felt like a little mermaid or something. It was so cool. I was a like little talking, mermaid? You know. A five foot, up, nine, <laughs> five foot nine mermaid, Dave. <laughs> All, right. All right, we got none but love for you around here, <laughs> Bree, but we got to continue Thanks. spreading the love throughout the regions. I'm here to stay, don't worry. All right, stay tuned because we're going to be having an insightful <laughs> conservation minute tip for you oh, along boy. with <laughs> Northwest Region Report and Captain, who's quite the catch. Wow. More to come on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Tires Plus, Total Car Care, the IGFA, Conservation Through Education, Get Your Hands Wet, Florida Outdoor Experience, Lumber Rock, Captain Harry's Fishing Supply Company, and Sports Grill. Introducing Helmmaster, Yamaha's first fully integrated digital boat control system. With Helmmaster, you can start your outboards with a swipe of a paw and control them with a single lever. Outboard trim and steering friction adjust automatically as you accelerate and decelerate. Adjust engine speed with the touch of a button. The Helmmaster joystick provides the means to navigate and dock precisely with confidence and ease. Take control of your next vessel with Helmmaster at your command. Fish Dock, the total saltwater experience, returns to New Smyrna Beach this Memorial Day weekend. Bring the whole gang to Riverside Park for an incredible family experience. Tournaments, boat shows, seminars, kids clinics, chowder cook-off, and the Fish Dock 5K Fun Run. Visit fishdock.com to register for the new Bill Fish Open, the Offshore Striker Tournament, or the Redfish Trout Challenge for your chance to win thousands in cash, prizes, and much more. Fish Dock, Memorial Day weekend in New Smyrna Beach. Don't miss this one. Startron is a multifunctional fuel additive that uses enzyme technology. Startron cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Engines powered by Startron treated fuel start easily and run smoothly with fewer emissions and better fuel economy. Startron restores octane to old substandard fuel. Startron's enzyme formula enhances combustion for a more complete fuel burn. Startron, it's not the engine, it's the fuel. Good vibration. It's such a sweet. I do. 
The Chevrolet Cruze, loved in 119 countries around the world. Proof we're not so different after all. It's the new world. I'm Rick Murphy, and fishing throughout Florida, the fishing capital world, is my passion. There's nothing better than landing a trophy bass except releasing it. Florida Trophy Catch Program allows you to reward yourself for releasing bass over eight pounds. Hey, you saltwater anglers, you need to get a freshwater fishing license. Bass fishing is a great option when the weather isn't cooperating offshore. Besides, simply going to TrophyCatchFlorida.com and registering makes you eligible for drawing of a bass boat. And the next time you catch a bass over eight pounds in Florida, photograph it showing the entire fish on the scale, release it, and get rewarded. Prizes start with $50 gift cards provided by Rapala, Experience Kissimmee, and many more. And if the bass is over 13 pounds, it could be worth more than $1,000 in prizes to you, including a free fiberglass mount. Reward yourself for releasing bass over eight pounds anywhere in Florida. You'll be helping the FWC ensure Florida is the bass fishing capital of the world today and tomorrow. Well, Rick, that was a beautiful conservation minute tip right there. Tell how, us all about bass. How about, how many bass you ever caught? None. Well, guess what? What? There's a goal, there's a challenge. Any of yeah. you guys out there want to take Bree? Contact her on Instagram yeah. and take her bass fishing. With, How's that work With for my you? new rod. That's How about it. That? Exactly. All right. Well, now I guess it's time to head up to the Northeast region where the sweetest and most charming Captain Russell Theron is standing by. Howdy, Russell. Now, I know you generally like to sight fish for Cobia, so why don't you tell us what kind of luck you've been having up there on the Florida Georgia line? It's my favorite band. Hey, Bree. Hey, Welcome Russell. Aboard. It's good to have you. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I tell you what, it's always a good day to return to the dock with a nice Cobia. You know, the cobia fishing, one of the important things that I've learned over the years to key on is very important is the water temperature. The cobia going to start showing up on artificial reefs and wrecks when the water temperature rises above 70. 71, 72, I have really found for what we're doing around here is really one of the key uh, temperatures that we definitely want to kind of focus on. Now look, what they're going to do is they're going to move in near shore later on and they're going to feed on the bait fish and follow the pods and the rays as they migrate north. A great way to catch cobia, cobia is, that's, like you say, the sight fish. Now to see a big cobia go after your live bait or lure, I mean, that's what it's all about. Cobia, cobia loves structure and uh, they'll, they'll hold where they've got bait and where they can ambush their prey. Now look for the cobia around the reefs, the wrecks, the sea buoys, shrimp boats, rays, and on the bait pods. Some of the best baits for cobia are live eel, live crabs, live pogies, or a live mullet with an attitude. Some of the cobia can run anywhere from uh, 15 to 35 pounds. All right, now, let's go say, offshore. Yeah, go ahead, Russell. Yep. Sorry. No, thanks, Rick. Offshore, we want to talk about the wahoo fishing. This is a great time of year to target the wahoo. The Wahoo are caught in 160 to 180 foot of water on a continental break. High speed trolling works best for the tournament anglers and they just strictly want to catch the Wahoo. The key is to fish the tide lines and the temperature breaks. The best bite is coming from a purple and black sea witch lure. Typical uh, Wahoo is going to weigh anywhere from 40 to 50 pounds. All right, let's go now, inshore now. Rick, the big black drum bite has been on. Uh, the, the water temperatures have been rising. The big drum have moved into the inlets like the Fernandina Inlet, Fernandina Beach, Mayport, and the St. Augustine Inlet are all holding big drum as they move in to spawn. Fish the big drum on both sides of the low and the high tides, close to sunrise and sunset to get the best bite. To catch these big black drum, you want to use a me medium-sized tip rod, six to seven foot in length, and the rod should be loaded with at least 40 to 50 pounds of monofilament test line. Use a Carolina rig with an egg sinker and enough weight to hold the bottom, maybe three to eight inches, and a barrel swivel as a stopper. Use about three or four foot of leader, maybe 40 to 60 pound test, and tie on at least a four-aught or larger kale hook. 
One of the best baits is a live half of a blue crab. Typical size black drum are going to run anywhere from 30 to 60 pounds, and some can top 80. Also, in shore, we've got to talk about our red fishing. The redfish uh, bite has been best of all the inshore species. Target the redfish on the shell bars along the ICW and five to seven foot of water with a quarter ounce jig head near some of the areas where there's lots of bait fish. Some of the best bait for the reds is going to be cut crab, a live mullet, mud minnows, live shrimp. Some of the reds are averaging anywhere from three to seven pounds. Now also, Rick, I just want to share with our members about the CCA. If you're not a CCA member, you need to sign up because your membership really does count. Hey, Russell, I got a question for you. Do you ever fish for those big black drums? Yes, I do. All right, tell me what you like as far as to, you said cutting the blue crab in half. How do you do that, Russell? Well, you want to pop that shell into. You take it, pop the shell off, pull the cap off is what I call it. And you can just basically half the crab. These drums are so big. And that's what they're going to key on. They're, they're, they they just like the redfish, they love crab. They also have crushers. The scent is going to work well good for them. But cut that crab in half. You can take the dead man or the fingers off of it, the legs off of it. Just use a half of that blue crab, pop the shell off. You're good to go, Rick. All right. Thank you, Russell. I want to ask you one other quick question, though. Bree and I want to come up there and go fishing with you. Can we catch a big black drum? I really like to catch a one over, you know, 30 or 40 or 50 pounds. Do you think that's possible? Yes. I really think that is, Rick. Woo! What time? I'll tell you, some of the best times is definitely when we have these spring tides. That's when they really like to spawn on those good, strong spring tides. All right, go I'll, ahead. I'll call you after the show. Great report. I'm going to go ahead and get to the Northeast region hotspots from your region. Let's see, inshore, big black drum are in the inlets. The last two hours of the ebb and the first two hours of the flood tide, we're going to use a half of a fresh blue crab for bait. And then offshore, Wahoo, fast troll sea witch lures on the temperature breaks that range from 73 to 78 degrees over the ledge, Bree. That is going to be so much fun to go fishing. We got a lot of fishing to go do. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> wow, what a great first show it's been. But it's not over and we still have a lot to talk about, so stay hooked. Coming up. We'll be talking about next week's theme species along with how you can get involved and meet the captains from our show. We'll be right back. A man. A man and his truck. And tofu. And veggie burgers. And raw kale salad. All fine. Just not today. Whatever you do. Introducing High Country, the premium Silverado. Do it good. Silverado, 2014 North American Truck of the Year. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha Forward Thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. Thanks for tuning in to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with all of our captains, contests, and appearances. You don't ever have to miss a show. You can find full episodes of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report right on your YouTube channel. And don't forget to check out our website for fishing reports in your region. Visit www.ChevyFloridaInsiderFishingReport.com where you'll find everything you need to know. Stay connected. Next week on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we are talking snook, my personal favorite. So make sure to tune in to Sun Sports every Thursday. Plus, you can catch repeats of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report on Fridays and Saturdays. Make sure to check your local listings for times. 
You did a great job awesome. for your first show. Thanks, but Dave, you know what? Job. I might have learned a little something about our girl here. What? Everybody's her favorite guide. She Every has cold fish hands. is her favorite fish. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like one of those girls that she's gonna tell you that. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'll favorite. take her bass fishing. I bet that's her favorite truck. It's too. okay. That's my favorite, truck. <laughs> okay, that's my favorite truck. I'm telling you, it is my favorite <laughs> truck too. I and I gotta tell truck. you, this is my favorite show. My favorite show. My favorite co-host. My favorite man on the workbench. Co-host, co-host, And more co importantly, look how good a job we did from it's King Sailfish and all these beautiful Great mountains. job. Looks beautiful it's in absolutely here. absolutely beautiful. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, tune in for Snook. We're Snooks. going to be catching, showing you how to catch monsters. Right, Bree? Right, that's right. I've caught some monsters. Bit, Dave? See yeah, plenty. <laughs> See you. Good luck in Guatemala. I'll be in Guatemala. I have Captain Harry here next year, next week. <laughs> <laughs>